The Manchester and Wigan Railway was a railway in northwest of England and it opened in 1864 and closed to passengers on the 3rd of May 1969. And it was part of the London and Northwestern Railway before the grouping of 1923. There were various branches, connections, junctions, collieries and stations along this route and it's too much for me to walk along in just a single day. So in this section on this particular walk I'm going to be beginning at Monton Green and heading off in the direction towards Tidesley. A look at Rail Map Online shows you the huge astronomical amount of railways in the Manchester area heading off towards Wigan. It's like a tin of spaghetti just tipped onto the Google map. All different colours though, everywhere. The ones we're concentrating on are purple. I'll zoom in just a distance and you'll see roughly where we are. It's this purple line going from left to right. And we're beginning at Monton Green. That's where the track bed can be picked up for us to follow. Next up, we'll be looking towards where Worsley Station once was. I believe there was some remains of this. And then we end up at Row Green Junction. This is where the line splits into two and the other line heads up towards Bolton. That'll be something for us to come back to and do another day. Ellenbrook Station is next. This is where the busway begins. I can't find any images of Ellenbrook Station, so when we get there, I'm afraid I've got nothing to show you on that one. And then we'll head off towards Tidesley, where the busway does continue. Let's jump down to the site of Monton Green Station. So you join me at Monton Green Station, or the former sites off. I've just come away from Parring Road. That's just down there. You might just be able to make out a little bit of traffic. I've come up what was onto the embankment just here. The station opened in 1887. It lasted until May 1969. Nothing remains of this at all, but it has been turned into a greenway. And that is the route we're going to be following. Hopefully it will brighten up a bit too. Monton Green Station opened on the 1st of November in 1887. The station was built on an embankment at the road junctions of Canal Bank and Parrin Lane in Monton, and there were two platforms, both of the wooden variety. Now, sadly, the station was destroyed by fire on the west side in 1906, but it was actually rebuilt, as you can see in the previous photos. There was two platforms at Monton Green Station and that is the direction of Manchester behind us. Nothing for us to follow there. There may be some traces of the former route back into the city centre, but nothing that we can follow like this. So I'm going to push forward now. We're going in the direction of Wigan because this was the Manchester to Wigan Railway, also known as the Row Green Loop Line. Nothing railway related to see apart from the embankment, but if I see anything, I'll be sure to show you. Now, I have come and done this just after 7am in the morning. Sunrise is around about 7.20 and I think it's about 7.45 now. And the amount of people I've already seen along here has been tremendous, really. I mean, I have to keep stopping and starting to do this. But the fact it's being used and it's so, so popular. Cyclists, dog walkers, even people going to work. It's brilliant that it just shows that these things are very useful once they're no longer a railway. just showing you some foundations on the floor like a little square brick remains maybe an old signal box we'll look at old maps to see if that is anything um it's still really really dull look at it but the trees don't really help because there's quite a bright cloud cover there worsley station is the next one i've got to look for that just before worsley road uh two platforms again open and closed in the same year as the one we've just been to Hopefully there are some remains on very, very high embankments on both sides as well. All the way so far. Also means there's no chance of using the drone currently as well, which would have been all right because there's no built up areas either side of me. So that's a shame, but I'll try at some point to get it up and give it a bit of over the 
Now the railway did open in 1864 and lasted until 1969. It was the London and North Western Railway up until the pre-grouping of 1923. I think just ahead we're coming up to where the former railway station was. So here it is, Worsley Station opened in 1864 and closed in May 1969. There used to be three platforms here. This looks pretty wide just there, doesn't it? Was this perhaps wide enough for double track and the third one was on the opposite side. We can get on top of the platforms, look. So I'm unsure where the other track would have been if it had come around this side or in fact gone around over to the other side of that platform. So we can actually walk across the top look now. I can see some remains of former railway brickwork on the end of that platform over there. So the Worsley Brook is down there as well. So I'll poke the camera down there too. But it's great how they've made this, isn't it? And they've made it accessible as well with the steps at both sides. Still quite a drop down on the other side though, isn't there? And here's that other wall I was telling you about. It's on the opposite platform, look. And the brook, looks like you can actually get down to walk along that if you want to, which I'm not gonna do. But there is steps down and the brook is just down there so the third platform then i don't know it must have been we'll find it on some old photos won't we but this is the other platform this is the view that you would have had taking a closer look that wall comes to the end of the platform I'm going to say the other track went over that side of that platform somewhere so that might just clear that up and a look at SLS maps does appear to confirm that look over here there's the station building on the center of the map there dating around about 1914 and just on this side look there's another track that appears to come round an extension of that platform so it's the main platform going alongside and below the main station building but it's a track or a platform on the opposite side of the main running line so next up we go underneath the m60 or the manchester outer ring road there was some sidings on that side called sanderson sidings to my left just before the motorway that is worsley woods over there there was also a sand pit over in that direction. But I think we are about to cross under where, uh, yes, I've just seen a lorry go over there. So we're around this bend, and I believe we're gonna go under the M60. So the sidings must have been this little area that's flattened out to my left, because it's quite wide here, isn't it, the cutting? So there must have been three, maybe four tracks wide. I can see the bridge coming into view now. Oh, there's two bridges, look. So we've got the M60, you're not going to be able to see it just yet but there's another more traditional bridge immediately after this one so there it is a rather noisy m6 now the over there was the bridgewater collieries railway probably about 500 meters or so you've got the other bridge lot immediately after this one which was probably the original road before this one came along so that's pretty good isn't it i can't say i've really seen anything like that before where you go under such a large bridge such as this and you come straight out and there's another more traditional stonework bridge that's pretty good isn't it that i like that there's two different time periods there isn't there from the 1960s to what was probably the late 1860s extraordinary so that's a nice double arch underbody of the bridge just there and out the other side that's pretty quaint that isn't it Bit of glare it's brightening up now finally so pushing on forwards we're gonna hit row green junction where the line splits into two our route is going to take us off to wigan and on the right it head off towards bolton if i get time i'm going to come back and follow that route it doesn't go all the way to bolton you can't walk as far as that but it does go a substantial distance so i think there's a if i get time there'll be a return trip back to this junction to pick up the other route but i'm gonna take a left 
and see what else we could uncover. Look at this retaining wall. That's quite lengthy, isn't it? Goes a substantial distance down on the left hand side. It's a more traditional embankment on the right hand side, but yeah, they've needed to uh, reinforce that at some point, haven't they? Obviously in the early life of the railway too, with it being actual stone. So we've come up from Manchester, haven't we? And we've approached Row Green Junction. This is Green Leach Lane above us. And if we go that way, we're going to go off towards Bolton. But it also goes in the opposite direction towards Tidesley and Wigan. Commonly known as the Tidesley Loop Line on this side. I'm not sure if it was actually a loop or that's a name that's been given to it since it was turned into a pedestrian way. That's the way we're going to go. Looks very woodland and picturesque down there. But I do, as I said earlier, I would like to come back and have a look up there. It looks very, very straight and long, doesn't it? Very foresty. So, let's push on. Let's get ourselves off towards Tidesley. A couple of images here of Row Green Junction. You've got the line going off to the left, which is off towards Wigan. Notice that the track has already been severed. The line going off towards Bolton on the right hand side. Looking from a reverse angle, you can see the track has been relayed. Look, the points have been removed and we're heading towards Manchester in the far distance. Bolton to the left behind us and Wigan to the right behind us. So the next station down here was Ellenbrook, opened in 1864. This one didn't last as long as the previous two, it went as far as 1961. It went back to having two platforms as opposed to three at the previous station, but two at the first station along this route. It's just as we approach New Manchester. I wonder if there are any remains to this one as there was at our previous station at Worsley where the platforms were. Sounds like I can hear water falling just in front of me. There is some green steel pole in there. So I think there's going to be something. So that's what we're looking at here. Look, there's a bit of a culvert just there. One that's very low and you can't get in on the other side. Oh, look at that as well. Yeah, look at that. That's what I can hear. nice isn't it the a580 is next that's just coming up ahead as the route heads off towards new manchester and tidesley closed ahead please follow pedestrian diversion so this is going to be the 580 bridge looks like there's a great big tarpaulin on it so they must be doing some reinforcement work to it yeah there's clearly some works going off there hope you on the mesh you can see it a bit better now all it up underneath whether that's temporary lighting or actually permanent lighting i'm unsure might be able to see on the other side what's going off so i've got to take this diversion up onto the a580 and hopefully it's pretty simple to even get down on the other side and it's just this bridge that we're diverting around today That is a big old bridge and it is permanent lighting that's in there. That is huge, that is, must be close to actually being classed as a tunnel. So I've come from all the way over there, can you see that lorry just about there? That's the other side of it. it must be a similar length to Cromer Tunnel in Norfolk. I'd love to know how long that is. I'll try and find out and see if I can find any actual pictures. So for now we can't follow the track bed, we're just above it. That is down there. But I'm sure we'll be able to get down sooner rather than later so a nice little bridge there look we still cannot oh we might be able to access it to be fair 
this is Broadway. I'm going to cross this bridge and actually have a look, see what's going off. Because I can see diversion signs down there, which must mean you probably allow back on it again. Yeah, there's people down there. So that's where we've just come from, down there. And there are di diversion signs just there too. So I'm going to make my way back down. So this is Broadway Bridge that we're about to go under. We were just stood up there a moment ago. So just down there, you might be able to see some lights in the distance and that's where there's work going off at that really, really long bridge that we have to divert around. Nice little plaque, Broadway Bridge. So we're gonna push on now towards New Manchester and see how it all unfolds. That's what it's like behind, look. So mostly or mostly common collieries. They were all situated over there. The next bridge we're going to come to is New Earth Road, about another quarter of a mile in front. That is the site of Ellenbrook Station. Don't know if there's going to be any remains, but we'll find out together. It also marks the point where the railway turns into a guided busway. I think I'm going to have a bit of a goal on one of them later as I make myself back towards Manchester after I've gone as far as Tidesley. Because to continue this route, I'm going to come back the next day. I've noticed these in the city centre with the bright yellow double deckers and they've got the little wheels at the side of them. I'm a bit unsure whether they're worthwhile or why can't they just have normal buses going down the former track beds and I'm sure the drivers are capable. Um, comments below on that. What's your thoughts on the guided busway? We'll get to see it very, very shortly. Like a coping stone, a great big lump of something there, look, and staggered opposite. There's another one. Mm, you see them both in shot, look. It's down here. There used to be a bridge and an embankment on both sides. Ellenbrook Station has completely gone and in its place, there you go, see the bus? That is just rolling off the main road and going to where the former Ellenbrook Station was. And it's now that guided busway. There it goes, so the next bus departing from platform one it's the V2 service towards Wigan. How peculiar. So this would have been Ellenbrook Station. You can see there's a bit of an incline which would have gone back up to the original embankment that went across the road just down there where we've just come from. It's got destinations and times up there a lot, just as it would have been if it was a railway station. So it's good it's been repurposed for public transport. But again, why did it have to be built like this? It's not me complaining about it, I'm just curious why it couldn't have been like just a, a bus lane in both directions for any bus vehicle to go up and down it any time of the day or night. Really not a great deal to show you. The track bed or the bus lane is um, going on a descent again and then it goes uphill again on that side so I'm assuming they've removed any bridges that are on the route and they've just landscaped it dipping down and going back up again because it's going up a hill again and there's no way that that was a track bed you'll see it when I get closer and this is New City Road we're just over seven miles from Lee Town Centre we're not going that far in this particular video and it was at this point that I decided to call it a day on this particular walk and video because quite a distance of this section of line was this guided busway heading up towards Tysley and slightly beyond and nothing to show you. So I will be back very very soon to continue this journey towards Wigan where it does get a little more interesting again. I'll look forward to seeing you in the very next one. Bye bye for now.